minds. Allow us to see you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to day nine, 21 days of prayer, and you're here, and I'm proud of you. Um, excited after what happened last night. How many people were here last night? Okay. I was told I might need to remind you what's on these cards, but I don't think I need to. These cards have names on them, and we get the privilege over the next couple of weeks to pray over these names. And I believe firmly that we will see many, many people come to know the Lord because of this moment and because of what we're going to do over the next few weeks. And we're going to intercede on behalf of these names and see them come to the Lord. Well, today I do want to talk a little bit about the problem of pain and what to do with pain. Pain is a tough one. And I believe pretty firmly that in order to deal with pain, and I mean, I mean pain, not just like physical pain, I mean pain. I've had a lot of physical pain. I've blown two Achilles, an ACL, torn hip flexor. Some of you watched me do it right there uh, Christmas two years ago and like to send me clips every other year or so uh, to see what happened on the live feed. I understand that part. I've been through plenty of that. There's other pain. There's emotional pain. There's relational pain. There's grief. There's loss. What do we do with pain? Theologically, like what do we do with God when we are facing what looks and feels like insurmountable pain? And there are seasons of life, there are seasons that it seems to pile up. Like it's not just one thing, it's several things. It just seems like another thing gets added to the pile every week. Another person. And you're not just carrying your own pain, but you're carrying other people's pain. Family, friends. I know in this season right now, we're facing quite a bit in my house. My mother-in-law was diagnosed with uh, <coughs> Lou Gehrig's this last year. And the decline has been fast. And I don't know any other word other than harrowing that disease is. And watching my father-in-law take care of her and watching my wife grieve in real time the loss of her mother. What do we do with this pain? How do we, how do we manage? How do we turn it into something that's not poisonous is the real question. Because pain in and of itself is a very selfish entity what pain wants to do, and if you think about the physical body, if you think about what pain is, it is the brain pointing and turning all of your attention to a spot that's a problem, right? Literally, when I blew my Achilles on this stage, right here, my body was screaming at me, <laughs> telling me something's really wrong. Uh, you need to address this. This is a serious problem. <clears throat> and it wants to divert all of your attention to that location. So in life, when we have a serious pain, when we have emotional and, and relational serious grief, when we have pain in our life, what it wants to do is divert and just focus all of your attention on that point, on that pain and nothing else. That's what pain wants to do. And the problem with that is when we turn all of our attention there, that's all we see. It's all we focus on, it's all we do. And we can't be living in purpose. We can't be living in what God wants for us when our attention and our focus is on nothing else but the pain in our life. And I, so what it's going to take to, to, to deal and manage with that, not to allow ourselves to focus only on the pain, for me is a proper perspective of who God is and what he wants to do for you. So perspective matters. So for me, theologically, we have to start with this point of we have to believe to our very core, like in the bones of our fiber and our being, we have to believe that God is good. 
You have to believe that, not just like this simple ideology, because everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? That, that's Mike Tyson's statement. Everybody has a plan. Everybody kind of believes something until it really matters. You have to believe, believe it, that God is good all the time. That is his very nature. It is an attribute of God that he is good, that he is holy. The second thing is that God loves you. He loves you personally, individually, loves you, cares for you more than you can possibly imagine, wants the best for you more than you could possibly imagine. And he loves us collectively, us, all of his children. That's important because it kind of helps us get the right perspective on pain in particular. So we have to start with this ingrained nature of understanding and believing in God and believing the best in God. That even in the midst of your pain, even in the midst of your struggle, even in the midst of confusion and frustration and anger at the pain, you have to believe that God is good. That he has the best for you and he has the best for us collectively. And if you believe those things, if at the very core of your being you understand that Jesus intentionally walked this life. Can you imagine the amount of traveling he did? There are days I'm physically tired and then I think about how much Jesus like walked and I'm like, okay, yeah, I think I can get through this long day. I, I, that's probably okay. He had to walk everywhere. He went across that nation, all right? He went everywhere. He's sleeping on the ground, okay? He, he knows tired. He understands that pretty well. And then in the midst of all of my surgeries and all the pain that I've had in that way, in the light of the cross feels like nothing. Feels like nothing but he understands your pain. That's really important, isn't it? That he actually knows it. He doesn't just kind of have platitudes about pain, like he actually understands pain to a, to a really severe degree. So if we believe that he loves us, we believe that he understands what we're going through. He actually knows what we're going through. Then what do we do with the problem of pain? I think we can look at some scriptures and get some perspective. Isaiah 43, 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not flow over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The fire will not destroy you. Psalm 46, 1 through 3, God is our safe place and our strength. He is always our help when we are in trouble, so we will not be afraid. And even if the earth is shaken and the mountains fall into the center of the sea, even if the waters go wild with the storm and the mountains shake with its action. Psalm 23, 4, and even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So we're given a promise. So we have a pain problem but we're given a promise. And the promise is pretty simple. He's in it with you. And if we believe very firmly that God loves us and that he has the best for us and that he's always good, he's always gonna work things good. We live in a broken world that is undeniable. That is the collective sin of humanity that has broken this world. That is why there is sickness. That is why there is pain. That's why there is destruction on this earth. That's why there's natural disasters. That's why there's pain. It's because of our collective sin. We broke it. But he can still take the consequences of our collective sin and turn it to good. And he's always working. He's always moving. He's always collectively moving us to the end. And if you read the end of the book, it works out pretty well for everybody, right? So we can believe in what he is doing collectively, even if it means we're going to have to serve in a way that's going to hurt. 
And it's in the pain that I believe that we find perspective on who God is that we just simply cannot understand without it. You can't understand that a friend is with you until they've been with you on the ground when you're crying. You can't understand the depth of a relationship until you've gone through something together, right? You can't understand God's love for you unless you experience him in the, in the pain. You can't. God is always using what we're going through to draw us to him. And proper perspective can do this. It can bring you purpose and power. And I believe pretty firmly that we are designed in a way that we're always adding tools for what God has for us. He is constantly adding to us and giving us the right things for the right moment at the right time to give to the right person. And sometimes our pain can lead to somebody else's salvation. I believe that. But it will not happen. We will not be able to put it into proper perspective. We will not be able to turn that into power and turn it into Holy Spirit leading until we deal with it and we have a proper perspective of what God's doing in it, right? So if we're so hyper-focused on the pain and not what's going on around us, not what God's trying to purpose us to do, then we will miss the boat. And so I see in John 16, 33, it says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. So there's two things I want you to think about as we pray this morning. And as you pray over these names, which I am sure there are a bunch of names in here that are hyper-focused and just looking at their pain. And they can't see any, anything else other than that. As you pray over these names, I want you to keep that in mind and think of these two things. What if his presence can outweigh the trial? What if his presence can outweigh the heaviness of the trial? What if, what if we looked at it through the lens of faith, as in the belief that God is good and that he's doing something in our midst instead of unbelief. And I think that with a proper perspective of what God is trying to do, we can turn our pain into power. And we can see God do something that is beyond our control, beyond what we could possibly imagine. So let's pray with that kind of confidence, with that kind of belief, and believe that God wants to do something miraculous in our midst, even if it's not fixing the pain that we have. Let's go to the Lord. Dear Lord, thank you so much for what you are doing in our midst. That Lord, right now that you would be preparing people that would come tonight and that they would experience your love. They would experience it and it would draw them out of this hyper-focus of the pain in their life and it would give them purpose. We believe right now that the names on these cards and everything that you have planned for the next 24 hours is all for your glory and that you wanna do something way bigger than we could possibly imagine in this place. So thank you, God. Thank you for what you're doing. We believe in you. We believe in you. In your precious name, the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Let's go to the Lord.